This copy of a 4th century fresco by Benozzo Gazzoli want to be a sort of stratigraphic of a fresco to grasp the materials and the executive technique. Fresco technique is based on the chemistry of the minerals elements, in particular slime, which develops adhesive forces only on materials of the same nature, minerals in fact. The terracotta brick wall is properly brushed and washed. In order to receive a first layer of very rough mortar, made up of one part of lime and three of coarse sand, or other inert particles of large granulometry. This layer is well beaten with the float and left very rough because it must ensure the grip of the next layers to the masonry and therefore the stability of the entire work. On this first coarse layer called rough cast we spread another one, a riccio, sand finished, still rough, repeating the same previous operation. It will be on this layer that the painter will sketch his preparatory drawing, the Sinopia. Until the middle of 15th centuries, Italian fresco painters frequently paint the outlines for the main forms in their composition on a riccio, the sand finish, before applying the new intonaco section. Most pigments employed for these compositional guides have a red earthy color called Sinopia. Sinopia was the name after the city it came from. Eventually it became the name of this kind of underdrawing. Until the Renaissance, preliminary design were merely sketched on the wall. Later a new method became common. The design were traced by pouncing. the great attention to the selection of the ingredients, lime, sand, pigments, the preparation of the mortar occurred in the previous days and the ability to spread the plaster were and are the desired elements such as painting itself. After having wet the wall to saturation, this last layer of mortar is laid on and painted before it is hardened guaranteeing the properties of brightness and resistance typical of fresco. In particular, be careful not to leave air bubbles and maintain a constant flatness during work, using wooden slats or wood float. Actually, since the end of 14th century, this last layer, composed of lime and sand, called intonaco, begins to be saturated with a further thin layer of mortar composed of lime and marble powder in equal proportion, called intonachino or velo. This guarantees greater smoothness and brightness of the bottom, thanks to the properties of calcium carbonate. At this point, according with the Giotto's technique, Described in details by Cennino Cennini in his book of the art, written at the end of 14th century, when the plaster begins to pull, that is when no trace is visible at a slight pressure with the finger, it is possible to apply the pigments mixed only to pure water. In the Renaissance, this national sketch of the figures was helped and speed up with a transfer of the drawing through the cartoon. I drawings prepare on paper. The most widely used method for tracing the design was the spolvero technique, pouncing, obtained by passing a colored powder pad through the holes previously created on paper. When remove the paper from the wall, you just connect the dots with a sharp brush and start painting.
subsequently and throughout the Baroque period, this more precise but more laborious method was flanked and then replaced with indirect incision. The main lines of the drawing were pressed with the handle of the brush against the plaster through the paper, leaving the grooves rounded on the fresh mortar. The horizontal and vertical lines were instead incised directly with the handle of the brush on the fresh mortar, leaving in this case sharp edges direct incision. We start by redesigning the volumes with a sharp brush and a color called Verdaccio, which Nino explains is composed of the quantity of an ochre bean, a black lentil and a very little pink. With this color the whole composition was sketched, from the skin to the garments, from the hair to the architectures. Immediately after the reconstruction of the composition with Verdaccio, we pass to give the shadow on the skin with a green earth, squeezing the brush with your fingers and redoing the whole volumes. At this point we have a sort of monochromatic painting on which the color pink should be applied. This color for Giotto was the Cinabrese, composed of two parts of red earth sinopia and one part of San Giovanni white. I dried line, therefore of the same nature of the plaster. With this color the lips and the cheekbones were touched fading, shading well toward the ears. This first painted figure was left at this pictorial level to favor the purpose of this stratigraphic reproduction. The cut made at the end of the day was done diagonally to favor a slight overlap of the plaster the next day. Taking into account that a fresco can be considered as such only if executed before the total hardening of the mortar, the painter must know the portion of the plaster that will be able to complete daily, thus subdividing the work into working days, giornate di lavoro. Certainly, Bonfresco is the most complex painting technique, both for the preparation of all the layers and their applications, both for the limited time of pictorial execution, for the impossibility of making corrections, but above all, for the difficulty in reaching the right brightness of colors when dry. In fact, when the mortar is saturated with water, the colors appear much darker than the following days. The grey mortar itself turns white after the water evaporates, and the colors lighten with it. Technically, the frisco's technique can be divided in three different moments. At the beginning, the brush strokes of color is not absorbed well by the plaster because its pores are still semi-saturated with water. In this period, all the basic backgrounds are laid out. In a second moment, as the water evaporates, 
the colors dispersed in the water are absorbed more and more rapidly, allowing to better perceive the shade that will have the color the following days. This second moment is called gold moment, momento d'oro, and it is in the central period in which the painter has to do his best, since from this moment depends the brilliance and the depth of the final effect typical of Bon Frisco. In the last phase, the evaporation is almost complete. The wall is called tired because it's no longer received the brush strokes as before. Therefore, here we limit ourselves to only final small retouch. After the green earth in the shadow and the cinabrese on the lips and the cheeks, you get from this cinabrese three more gradation of pink, more and more clear, adding the white of San Giovanni. Then, with these three colors, always rather liquid, all the skin tones was completed, but without ever completed hiding the underlining green which must always appear in transparency at the end of the shadows. It was finished with the highlights in white San Giovanni and the final details of the lips and eyes with the red earth and as well as the black in the dark details. What is crucial for an effect of depth of the final colors is always work in transparency and above all, do not torment the surface with unnecessary retouching. Too many overlapping colors will be opaque and death. Although the colors are dissolved in water alone, what makes this technique unique is its chemistry. The evaporating water drags lime scale molecules into the surface which once they have passed through the colors, are deposited on the surface and by binding with the carbon dioxide in the air, the calcium carbonate originates. A lattice of transparent calcium crystals forms which incorporates the pigments inside it, the carbonation process. The color is now part of the plaster and when it is a real fresco, made in the right time without dry retouching, neither water nor solvents or of any kind affect it. However, dry retouching with organic binders of various types such as eggs, glues, etc., according to the age, have always been used in the past to integrate fresco painting. The main justification for this attitude is attributable to the incompatibility of some colors to the alkalinity of lime, especially those pigments deriving from the animal and plant environment or from some minerals such as copper, sulfur and lead. In the period of Benozzo Gozzoli, as a blue were used lapis lazulo, the most expensive, or azzurrite mixed with organic binder onto a dry plaster that it was previously painted in dark red or black in fresco being blue transparent thanks to this dark background it was more intense and appealing but in this work coming from a tabernacle near florence this red base was used only in garments and not on the sky.